Okay. Hello and welcome to another social distance learning session brought to you by the LGC, where your heavily armed liberals reside. Tonight, the bench doctor is going to be showing us about the CZ Scorpion, which is on the bench there. Uh, this is currently being streamed out of the Zoom uh, application to Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. Sadly, we can't stream to YouTube because he's handling a firearm, a live firearm with no ammo, of course, and YouTube doesn't like people handling firearms on live streams. This will be put up on YouTube later. Uh, so everyone knows all participants, but the moderators and the presenter have their video shut off and are muted. If there are questions, please put them in the Discord Q&A channel or inside the Zoom chat here. <coughs> Excuse me. We have several people watching for questions at the various locations, but the easiest way to get your question answered is to become a member, sign into Zoom here, and you can ask your questions live in chat. Becoming a member is inexpensive, 10 bucks a year, and brings other benefits with it like affiliation with a CMP associated club. Feel free to join us in Discord for our usual after social distance learning shenanigans. We usually have a pretty good time there. The link is now in the chat. Uh, any member can come join us there and have access to the entire server. And now on to Scott with his CZ. Uh, welcome. Uh, thanks everybody for showing up. Um, this was a gun that I got recently after having shot a friend of mine's, and I've been looking for something like this. Uh, I just couldn't decide between this and the Strybog and other, you know, the, the SIG MPX. And I ended up on the uh, Scorpion, one, because of price, and two, because of the uh, aftermarket accessories and things that are available for these. Uh, and I, thus far, I'm really happy with it. I, I really like the gun. And I thought I would talk about it. It's a fairly popular one. And most people start changing things as soon as they get one because of some of the common characteristics of these things, like the grip uh, and the safety are the two most common ones. Uh, this, is, this has all been uh, upgraded. So I have the factory ones here on the bench to show you. But um, and just a, a, letter, a word of warning, uh, I'm an FFL type seven. So I'm allowed to make this an SBR and run the, the vertical foregrip. Don't do that unless you have the paperwork from the ATF. If you want to run that configuration, you have to fill out a form one with the ATF. And then once you get the form one stamp back, you can then uh, put these parts on the gun. So I just want to get that out of the way before anybody asks. Um, the gun, when I got it, came with uh, just no stock on it at all. It was just a pistol. Um, so anyway, so let's get started. Uh, this is the pistol version of it. They do make it in a carbine, you know, a longer version. They make this same model with a, a faux suppressor on the front, and it has a different handguard that kind of covers where the suppressor mounts right here. Uh, that's the model that I had played with earlier, um, but I had a distributor that had these on sale, uh, distributor price, and I didn't really care too much about the longer handguard, so I grabbed one up while I could, and um, this is what I ended up with, and I, that's why I really, really like it. It's, it's really fun, especially in this configuration. Um, it's, you know, I always say it's the poor man's uh, MP5, or as the joke goes, you know, we have an MP5 at home and then this is your at home MP5. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you all the things that I did to it and kind of how to work on these. Uh, they're, they're really simple and user friendly, which I enjoy. Um, as you can see, it's empty. The chamber flag is in the chamber and we have no ammo in the magazines. So we are safe. I don't have any live ammo on the bench. It's nine millimeter, if you didn't know. It comes with, depending on where you live, a 10 or 20 round magazine. Uh, and um, you can, 30 round, 32 round, 35 round magazines are readily available for them. Uh, and Magpul makes them now. So you, there's a cheaper alternative to the than the factory ones. I ordered a Magpul magazine just to test with it and see how it goes. I haven't received it yet, so I'll follow up at the, if the thing is just hot garbage. But these uh, factory ones aren't really terribly expensive. I see them around $20. So the factory ones aren't out of reach. Um, so And they run pretty well. They feed well and everything with the factory mags. I haven't had too much trouble with Magpul either on other platforms. So 
All right. The the uh, let's get started. Well, the two biggest upgrades that people do on these is this this grip because the grip angle on the uh, the original gun is really a weird one. It's it's really kicked back at a weird you know it kind of kicks back this way. And then this safety switch, I have the longer AK style safety. Uh, it's an ambidextrous safety, which is neat. This gun is pretty much completely ambidextrous. You can swap the charging handle out uh, to either side right here. It's got the kind of MP5 or the HK slap style handle, and you can switch it over to the other side, and I'll show you how to do that. Or you can run it where there's a charging handle on both sides, you know, so you can rack it on either side. Kind of a neat, neat idea. And for left-handed people, you can't change uh, the way, you know, the side of the ejects on, unfortunately, for left-handed people. So you still have to eat hot nine mil brass, but um, the rest of it's ambidextrous. Yeah, and you can get a bullpup stock for these. Uh, there's a company that makes them. My friend John now runs his in a bullpup. I, I don't care for it. I don't like bullpups personally, just the ergonomics of them. Um, but anyway, so the first thing I did was change this grip. And the nice thing was I just ordered it when I ordered the gun because I knew from experience I was going to change that right away. Um, so, you know, you might want to just give that some thought when you order the gun. You you know, you might like the factory grip, but I, I hated it. And let's see, you got to find the right tool for the job here. Uh, of course, it's not standard. It's got to be metric. You know, my best collection of Allen keys. And where is the right one? Uh, should have had all this ready. Uh, but I had to work today, so I was digging through. Oh, come on. Really? This is priorities, Scott. Priorities. Uh, well, yeah, I got to. As I tell my dog every day, I got to earn kibble money. I, um, unfortunately, my secondary job of working on guns doesn't pay the mortgage. So, unfortunately. All right, I found this one, this will work. So you just take this side screw out and just slide it out. And then you just kind of bump it back like that it just pops right off not much to it um this one i have is a slightly different grip angle and it comes with this uh grip tape on there that's cut out for this recessed area but you don't have to put it on there i just i tend to like them uh for my sweaty palms in the summer um so i usually put, like to put screws back in what they came out of so later on i don't have to uh, guess, play the guessing game. So to put a new one of these on, it's just the reverse of that process. You just slide it back on and you run your screw through and it mates up on this side. Pretty straightforward. That's a really quick uh, upgrade that's really common. So then we need to, if you wanted to do the safety, um, we have to take the trigger pack off, which uh, is kind of and I remember how to do this. It just pops right off, but you got to get. Ah, come on. Oh, yeah, I got to get that one out of there. Sorry. I forget. It's been a few days since I took this, took this apart. But thoughtfully, they they put a hole right through the trigger guard so you can get to the screw and I don't know if this is going to show up, but there's a screw uh, Allen head right here and they put a hole right through the trigger guard so you can get to it. So many manufacturers don't think of things like that. And then when you try to find a Allen wrench or something to fit in there, you're doing it at a weird angle. So that's kind of neat. I'm, I was impressed by that little development when I came to take this thing apart. I gotta take this screw out. And 
you know, CZ's got a reputation of being a pretty darn good gun company. And now I understand why. I've never owned one. I uh, worked on a couple of them, but never owned one. And uh, I'm impressed. Let's see here. I'm going to get this out of y'all. There was a comment, Scott, while you're doing that. that yeah. Watching you on the live stream makes this person feel better about working on their own guns. And oh. they're not the only person who forgets how all these things go together. Oh, yeah. Back well, apart. and if you have as many as I do, uh, that's a lot of material to forget. Trust me. Come on. Yeah, I don't remember all of the, the proper sequence. I meant to redo it, or refresh my memory today, but I got busy earning money, so maybe I have to. Yeah. Sorry. If I remember right, it just gets bumped. I get this pin out of my way. Oh, come on. Just waiting for the hammer now. Oh, no, this is not a hammer operation. I can strike it with a hammer just to uh, keep my streak alive of hitting things with hammers. There we go. Sorry. So this is the trigger the, the trigger grip or uh, module that comes out of the gun. And my advice would be if you're going to um, change your safety, which you probably will, because what happens is when your finger is up here, this, the factory safety just irritates the heck out of you. It's always in your way. So I like, I like the longer kind of AK style. It moves it up and out of your way. And then you can get to it really easy from the trigger well. So this is a really, really common upgrade that people do. And if you're going to go to the trouble of getting in here to do that, uh, another really big complaint with these is the trigger. And uh, so if you're going to do the safety, order a trigger and trigger springs and just do them while you're in there because you're going to take this thing apart anyway. You might as well just do all of the work um, to get this apart. And I'm reluctant to do it on film because it took me long enough to get it back together. It's not particularly difficult. It's just tedious. Um, you know, it's it just takes time. You're dealing with a couple of springs in there and getting them aligned properly. But it's something you can do at home with, with just minimal hand tools. It doesn't require a heck of a lot of um, experience or expensive tools to do. The safety uh, is pretty straightforward. It just, uh, there's two Allen screws right here and right here, and you unscrew those. And you can usually uh, upgrade this without taking the safety completely out of the gun, if you're not gonna change the trigger, you can just pull these, uh, pull this side off and replace it uh, and just put the Allen screw back in. But I wanted to replace the whole thing because I wanted to run um, the whole safety unit instead of just one side change. But a lot of people just change this out. But to do that, you would just unscrew the little Allen screw here from the top, lift this off, put your new one on, align it and put your screw back in. And that's a real quick upgrade for these. And none of these parts are really expensive on this gun, which was another reason I bought it. Um, you know, you can do some pretty, uh, you can make the gun pretty darn nice for less than a hundred bucks to get a trigger, the safety and the, and the pistol grip can make it a pretty, pretty nice ergonomic little gun. Uh, unlike a lot of other guns that are ridiculous to find parts for. Um, and to take this apart, you take the, uh, See the safety out, and then um, I took the uh, ejector out just to get it out of my way. And uh, I'm trying to remember all the different pieces to go about this, but then everything just comes out through the top, and you swap out the trigger and one spring is the most common trigger upgrade. There are drop in cassette style triggers for these, um, but this one seems to work okay. And None of the, this gun was really made to be run full auto. So the, whatever you do, even, you know, the, the um, semi-auto triggers just aren't as nice, but you know, you can, you can help them a lot with uh, by just upgrading them and changing the springs out. And like I said, don't let it 
scare you to get in there and do it. It's not as bad as you would think. A lot of trigger packs are a real pain to get in there and compress all those screws and things, but this one isn't particularly bad. So that's our uh, trigger group. And now over here, oh, and it, it comes with uh, a set of factory sights on it here and here, which is nice. So many guns come, I like the term optic ready, meaning we're not sending you anything to sight the gun. Uh, it's code for we're cheap and didn't put anything on there, but it comes with these and they're perfectly adequate. Um, it's a peephole type sight with three different apertures or four, four apertures. Uh, I, I just threw a Holison uh, pistol red dot on there because I run these on a lot of other guns and I found them to be faster for me to acquire a sight picture and follow up shots on this platform with the red dot than the open sights, but they're perfectly adequate. And it comes with a pick rail all the way down and you have a couple of pick rails up here if you wanted to run a light on it uh, or you know some other accessory. The barrel is threaded. We'll get to this in a little bit. It's kind of a weird situation. Um, and uh, so now let's take the uh, charging handle out and flip it around or I changed this one. I didn't, uh, let's see if I can find the factory one here. It also comes with a foregrip on it uh, in the pistol configuration because uh, more, this is the factory one and you can see size wise. Let me see if I can get a comparison here. Uh, some sort of, but this one's a little bit, the new one's a little bit longer and chunkier and it's easier to kind of grab a hold of. Uh, but this is what it looks like out of the gun. It's really simple and straightforward. It's just a little piece of uh, plastic and a metal rod with a spring in it. If you're familiar with HK uh, takedown procedures, it's that same kind of pin. It's got this spring in there that retains it. And to get them in and out, you just kind of compress that spring a little bit. This is the foregrip that it comes with. Um, and it's fine. And I think it's more there to prevent you from running your hand up over the front of the gun. You know, you tend to grip them pretty close to the muzzle. And this gun is really easy to kind of, you know, when you're running around in the heat of the uh, training session, get your hand up over the muzzle. So it gives you a hand stop to keep you from, you know, doing that. I like the pistol grip like this just because it's cool and I can. I don't think there's any super tactical reason for it. And I really don't like them on bigger guns like ARs, um, but this gun seemed to be a really good candidate for it. And I had one laying around. So once I pull to get this out, the charging handle there is on the shooter's right-hand side, a uh, little pin up here. And you just push that out. Grab a, yeah, maybe we will use a hammer today. Punch here. This doesn't punch out. Here we go, hammer time. Pull that out. Then you can just run, once you pull that pin out, that's all that's retaining this charging handle. And uh, so we can compare the two. And you can see the one on, th this one is my new one. And this one is my old one. So you can see it's bigger and chunkier and it's just easier to get a hold of it. Um, so that's why I changed it. But to run it on the other side, you just flip the gun over, feed it back down through that channel and uh, put your uh, pin back in. So, and I think they make an ambidextrous one uh, where you have the uh, charging handle on both sides. Uh, I, I like it on the left side. That's just what I'm used to with stuff like this because I have a couple of HKs and they all work the same way. So that's how you upgrade that. And it's not an expensive piece. I think it's 20 bucks. Uh, well worth doing if you have uh, dainty uh, Barbie-like hands like I do. So that's that piece. Um, the bolt just comes straight back and out. Uh, it is spring-loaded, so be careful doing this. Remember 
how to do it. There we go. There's our bolt assembly. Pretty straightforward. This is a pretty powerful spring in here, but not horrible. Um, there's your bolt face, your firing pin, uh, your extractor is, uh, or yeah, your extractor is right here. And there's it just curls down and has a little lip. Uh, it's right there. So that's your bolt assembly. I haven't had an occasion to take this apart yet. Um, it looks to me like it's pretty straightforward. There's a pin here that comes up through here. I would imagine that comes out and that's probably retaining several pieces. And that's probably how you would get in there to replace this spring, which I'm sure is a wear item on this. Most springs usually are, uh, and your firing pins right here. Um, so I'm not, I'm not that familiar with this gun yet, like I am with a lot of other ones, but um, that's how you get the bolt assembly out of it. So at that point, now we have basically a gutted uh, Scorpion. And we can take this, you can swap out stocks. Um, this one is over here. It's a folding stock, which is kind of neat. I like it. Um, to get this apart, there is a little punch. There's a little button in here that's spring loaded and I'm not doing a very good job of a limit. There we go. Right there, you see that round button. You have to push that down and then this whole stock just slides on and all that's really retaining it is the spring loaded tension on this thing. Take it off. Scott, we have a question from the audience. Okay. Uh, the question is, will you please say chonky again? Chonky. It's a chonky. Okay. This is a chonky uh, folding stock made by Magpul. So, okay. Chonky like me. So, let me try to get this thing off. Grab a brass hammer. I don't want to keep hitting this thing with a ball peen hammer. It's on there pretty tight. Not sure why it's so tight. But it involves hitting it with a hammer, so I'm in 100%. See, this is why I use brass hammers. Uh, you can see that little brass mark that it left. That just wipes right off uh, of these. I think there's a Cerakote finish or something similar. Uh, if you did that with a steel hammer, you're going to chip right through and damage that surface. So uh, brass hammers are really the way to go uh, when working on guns. If you, if you can get away with using a brass hammer. By all means, do it. Brass picks are good. I mean, brass uh, punches are good too, but they tend to round out and, and mushroom out over time. So steel picks are okay as long as you keep them on the pin that you're looking to replace or change. But let's see if I can get this off of here. If you're making hammers, uh -huh. are you going to have Bench Doctor Mr. Hammer branded hammers to sell I in your store? I was thinking I was gonna I might make some and just send them out uh, for the fun of it, you know, just give them to people because they're kind of fun to make and it's a good. I would like to teach my son how to use the lathe. It's more of a lathe intensive uh, item than a mill. Um, so I don't know. I might make just make a few and figure out a way to distribute them. I don't think I could probably make enough money on them to make it worthwhile. All I do is take a piece of steel um, bar stock and I lay it down and get it concentric and smooth. And then I uh, knurl the end of it and take a piece of brass bar stock, turn it down, face it, drill a hole, tap and thread. And then I put a little bit of um, uh JB weld on there to keep it from flying off. And that's that it's pretty straightforward, but fun. I enjoy it. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to beat this thing too much, but this just slides right off. And when the gun comes, it has a, just a, um, 
piece that covers this back end, but there's a button you push in there and then you kind of knock the, the um, stock off by knocking it down just, and then it kind of clips back up into place. Uh, so, but they make a um, AR style Picatinny uh, adapter for back here. If you wanted to run uh, a stock that opens up your options to different stocks that you can use. This stock came with the folding piece. Some of them come with uh, without the folding piece. So there's a lot of different stocks out there, but it's super simple to replace one uh, should you want to do that. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see, what else do I have on this thing that we need to talk about? Changing the handguard. You know, it's not, it's not as simple as an AR-15. Uh, changing the handguard on one of these is a little bit more labor intensive and I haven't had occasion to change this one yet, but I'm fairly certain you have to remove quite a few of these Allen bolts to get this thing apart, which I'm not inclined to do right now. Um, and it would also, uh, let's see how this thing goes. Yeah, it would also concern me. Uh, I would probably want to re-zero the gun if I did that, uh, if I took it off because the front sight is sitting on top of this uh, pick rail that's part of the front handguard. So I, I would, if I took it off, I'd want to just verify that it was sighted in. If it's a new handguard, of course, you're going to want to sight it in anyway. But um, pretty straightforward there. And let's see what else about this thing. It comes with, uh, well, I have the QD um, slot here. And then it also comes with a uh, sling mount up here, which is kind of neat and it's ambidextrous. So you, it's there on both sides. So they, it's a pretty well thought out little gun. It's, um, I, I really like it and it's less thick. Uh, I mean, T-H-I-C-C -C thick up here where like I don't have particularly big hands. They're fairly wide, but my fingers aren't all that long. And it just felt better than the Strybog, which feels like a big two by six in your uh, four by six in your hands. It's a big, heavy um, chunk up front or chunky, should I say. Uh, but I would be a little worried. You know, that's kind of another reason to put the uh, hand guard or hand stop up here. If you had a light mounted on either side on this short barrel it would be a little weird to be holding it like this with that light right there. Um, so, you, you know, you, you'd have to kind of give that some thought, but that's assuming you buy the pistol. If you buy the carbine, uh, you have much more real estate to play with, but I didn't really want a carbine. I wanted a, a short dog. Another, uh, can, another weird thing about this gun is it does come with a threaded barrel and it's quote unquote suppressor ready, but it has this weird muzzle device on there. Uh, so I, I had to figure out a way to get this off because it's, it's got a 20 millimeter slot on there, but you need a narrow, like a tappet wrench. And then somebody else suggested a cone wrench from a bike store, uh, which is brilliant. And I've been meaning to swing by a bike shop and pick up a set of cone, uh, or cone wrenches, uh, because they would be really handy for things like this. But I just went over to the mill and grabbed a piece of steel and milled one out to make a uh, 20 millimeter wrench, which was probably dumb and not cost effective, but I enjoyed it. Uh, so this, this piece threads off, but there's a little spring catch down here that you need to kind of pull out of your way to unthread this thing. Yeah, there we go. I just had it on there finger tight. So this threads off and you can see the, so we can show you the little catch here. Uh, you can see it right down here, that little arm sticking out locks into these slots on this muzzle device. So you take that off and now this is a um, one half by 28 thread. So this will take a standard uh, AR-15 nine millimeter, uh, style muzzle device, whether you want to, I, I have, this is an ASR mount for a silencer co um, silencers, which are kind of neat because they're interchangeable. Uh, so that's what runs on here. What I need to discover, and maybe somebody who has one of these can answer. I'm not sure what's under, if you take this nut off on the gun, I don't, I haven't had time to do it yet, but 
if this threads off, what is the threading on the actual barrel? Um, is it half by 28 or are we supposed to mount the muzzle device on here against that threaded shoulder, which would be weird because it's not flat. So anyway, that's one question I have unanswered on this gun, but I will figure it out. So this needs to come off, I assume. But um, I do have a can for this and which th that's really what I wanted was a small like uh, submachine gun style gun with a, a suppressor on it and uh, just for pure fun. So that's how it all works. Is that no mega? Uh, no, this is a hybrid 46 M. Ah, so it will run anything from 22 up to 460. And to, to change it, all you have to do is change these end caps. Um, and then of course you have the ASR mount here. So to get these end caps off, I don't have the tool, but I have a tool. Um, it's a pretty neat. Uh, oh, and it's got a shorter configuration too. So you can shorten it and then just put your end cap on there. And that's probably how I'll run it for nine millimeter. Cause it's, you know, especially with uh, subsonic ammo, I can't imagine needing the entire you know, length of the suppressor to quiet it down. I think this is more of a rifle length thing, but it comes with a 30 cal end cap and a 460 cal end cap, which I can't imagine unless I was shooting a suppressed 1911. I don't have anything with a bore that size with a threaded barrel. Um, the, the hybrid will work on a 4570 that's threaded. So if you want to get one of those. Yeah. And yeah, then I just put it bought on it. video. Yeah, I should. I actually have a friend. I don't know if he's got the barrel threaded, but um, so anyway, I, I just bought it because I thought it was kind of neat to have at least one can that works on multiple guns. So that's why I ended up with this thing. So let's put it back together. And if anybody's got any questions, I'll try to answer them as I go. It's been pretty quiet this evening, which yeah. is why I've been adding my own color commentary. Ah, uh, Okay. But if anyone has questions, please feel free to add yeah, them in Discord yeah, or in the Zoom chat. There have so, been some comments that I'm going to relay while you're doing that. Like um, what? What? Who well, is this? Not, 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 nothing. Nothing bad about uh, you. No. Uh, just comments about the Scorpion in general. Like yeah. if someone had mentioned that the uh, most pistols come without an attached brace, and to add one is not easy. Uh, theirs was difficult, and ah. he had uh, heard the same from others. Yeah. And then a different person mentioned the SB tactical brace is easy once you figure out how hard to hit the end cap. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't you can't be shy around guns. You know, you are going to use a hammer if you work on enough guns. There's just no other way to get some things apart. Uh, I wouldn't recommend. I, I bought a little lightweight ball peen hammer for the purpose. I have two sizes, one slightly bigger, but these are really good if you need to strike something. Uh, pretty hard. Uh, I always, I try to use brass as much as possible just, and I like brass cause it's easy to, um, keep the face of this flush. You know, I, I can just take a file and file it down smooth. Um, you also want to try to keep these smooth. I don't know if you can see this one, see the face is all chowdered up right there. You got to be careful and I'll have to take a file and a, and a stone and smooth that out because, if you miss and strike the metal on an old gun, you're going to transfer those marks right into the finish on the gun. So ideally on my other one, that one's smooth and I don't ever hit anything rough with it, but um, you would, you would face this off. I might just throw it on the mill and face it off uh, because you want that really, really smooth. Brass is a sacrificial metal. So should you strike steel with it, you're going to sacrifice the brass before you damage uh, the part, which is the nice thing about it. That's why I try to use it as much as I can. And it's less apt to mar things. So to put that bolt back in, I just pushed it down and compressed the spring or pushed it back, compressed the string and let it uh, spring and let it pop back into place um, to do the front charging handle. Uh, this just drops back in to that slot. Uh, right here so it's got this slot on top of the gun 
this drops in there. And then this HK style pin. This one's plastic. It's weird and it doesn't have the spring on it. Uh, but that just goes back through this way. When you get back to the trigger pack, there's a question associated with that. Sure. So I'm going to test that, this mechanism. So you can do the HK slap on these, which is cool. It's a poor man's HK slap. If you've seen Die Hard or the, you know, the MP5, you do have that available to you for a lot less money. So that's one cool feature of this thing. My son loves that feature. All right, from here, um, I'm gonna put these parts away because I don't use them anymore. So we're ready to put the trigger pack back in. And if there's a question, now's the time, I think. Yep, the question is, uh, is there a way to polish or improve the factory gear or is it just better to buy an upgraded pack at that point or oh. upgraded? components i'm sure you could um by you know polishing uh, i haven't looked too much at it at the interface with the sear but uh you know it might, might be worth trying to take the trigger out and get an arkansas stone and and polish those surfaces if you've never done it be very very careful because what you're trying to do is smooth it out you're not you don't want to change that geometry of either of those two surfaces at all. You just want to remove any kind of imperfection in the surface. So be very, very careful because you can really lighten the trigger to a dangerous point by changing those that geometry on those two pieces. But it would just be the where the, um, uh, tri the hammer interfaces with the sear uh, the, and maybe the disconnector um, a little bit. But yeah, it, it'd be worth, trying it's it's going to take you probably an hour and a half two hours to really polish it super smooth uh, and then maybe you could just replace the spring and that would take you a long way but the triggers for these aren't terribly expensive so it may not be worth the time to do but yeah it's possible i'm sure at this point i'm going to interject and say that we do have trigger polishing videos on the lgc youtube channel there oh, yeah they, the triggers themselves are AR triggers, but the basic principles are the same about don't apply too much pressure, don't take off too much metal, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I did one uh, several months ago with the AR trigger, but yeah, as stated, it, it's the same principle. That where you've got to be really careful is, uh, you know, like with a 1911 trigger, polishing one of those, you need special fixtures and jigs. Um, it's not for the faint of heart to sit down and polish 1911 trigger because the, as the gun ages, those, uh, angles change and you have to know when to change that geometry and, and you need the jig to do it exactly. So be careful of 1911 triggers and just take it to a Smith and have it done. Um, unless you're experienced with it or brave. So once it's at to this point, we can just put the trigger pack back in and uh, let's see it slides in this way. Let's see if we can do this with less fumbling than before. Okay. Is that pin in my way? There you go. We catching up on this. Where are we catching up? Give it a little tappy tap tap. Um, wouldn't be that hard. I don't recall it being that difficult to put this thing back in. It's only difficult when the camera's running. Uh, Yeah. Let's see here. Maybe the bolt needs to be out of my way, or in my way. No, nope, that's not the answer. All 
Like I said, though, they, you know, don't let my fumbling around uh, bother you. It is it is a pretty easy gun to work on. Uh, it just what has to happen is maybe the trigger needs to be cocked, but you just need to fit this into this space on the bolt. Yeah, that's it. I think. I think. Do another low tap. Another thing you can do on something like this is get a piece of wood and put it on here, and then smack the wood if you're worried about damaging a finish. So that's another. Try everything. It is almost hammer time. I don't recall using a hammer to put this thing back on the last time I did this. So what, what sometimes this pin is falling in the way and blocking my passage. And that's what I thought was going on, but it doesn't appear to be the case. It's as far back as that will go. It's just got to get... You're getting some commiseration in the. Oh, comments. good, good, good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't claim to be uh, elegant or um, the, the the most knowledgeable or talented, but I don't mind sacrificing my dignity for the benefit of others. I'm too old to care anymore. Why is this being so troublesome today? I do not recall this difficulty. Let me see if I can determine where it's hanging up. It really doesn't look like it goes in forward first. I don't think it does because this isn't moving. That's not spring loaded. So it has to go in back first as it has this and a wedge on the back here and that's got to go in and lock under. So I would assume that's got to go in first so that it would clip in and then this should, so this should push down where I can lock this pin in. Why that it's not happening, I don't know. And I'm just trying to see if maybe the configuration, yeah, there we go. The bolt, I guess, has to be back for that to work. So anyway, there it is. Then you just push this pin back through and we replace our little screw that goes down here. Allen wrench down through the top. Once again, brilliant design. And I appreciate their attention to the end user. Unlike GM engineers and German engineers on cars where they say, it's not my problem. I'm, no, I'm never gonna have to replace that bolt. Uh, all right, there we go, back together. Now we put our pistol grip back on. And, uh, this. Do you know if this was designed for military service or was this a consumer? Uh, uh, it, it's based on the original Scorpion, which you know is an older submachine gun that the Czechs made. And it was like a, I think it was the Takarov round that it ran. Uh, or, or maybe it was 32 auto, but it was some weird, you know, not NATO style round that they ran it and they stopped making them. And, but everybody thought it was so cool. I think they made this, uh, you know, kind of in that same vein and to capture that market. So I don't know. I'm sure it's probably used by military or police somewhere because it's perfectly set up for that. But I don't know for certain. I'm just not that much of a CZ uh, fanboy yet. I can see the I, I I've worked on them and I really really like them. But I this is the first CZ gun I've ever owned, so I don't know much about them. So this, this... I figured I'd take a quick look at the Wikipedia page because the internet is never wrong. No, uh, right? No, no, uh, would lie. Um, not on the internet. Uh, there are several law enforcement agencies. Um, in like say Argentina, Canada, Finland, uh, the Philippines, Thailand, and even Vietnam. Ah. 
Yeah. Well, it, it seems like it would be a good solution for a uh, close quarters type weapon. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I would use it for home defense just because the nine millimeter round tends to over penetrate. But uh, I could see if you were kicking doors, you know, it's just so compact that, um, you know, it'd be pretty, pretty cool. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, it's got the regular nine millimeter magazines. So it's, it's an inexpensive gun to run. Uh, well, in, in the better times when ammo isn't 30 or 40 cents a round, but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. You put your safety on. And off. Bolt's already back. So you have a bolt release right here. So when the bolt's back, uh, on an empty mag, you can drop the magazine. Your mag release is right up here at the base of the trigger guard. Mag falls free. Put your new mag in. And at that point, you can slap this, but it doesn't send the bolt forward. You have to kind of push the, the uh, bolt release down. So it's kind of a weird implementation of that H and K. Because on an HK, you just slap that down and it, load, it strips the round off and loads it and you're good to go. So it's a little bit Don't weird. HKs not have a last round bolt hold open? Uh, no, they don't. At least the ones I have. I don't know about the MP5. I've only ever shot one once, and I don't recall. Um, so anyway, well, that's that's the Scorpion, the CZ Scorpion. And like I said, anything I showed you today, I will translate like the, the safety pistol grip, stock, uh, charging handle, all that stuff is interchangeable to all of the CZ uh, Scorpion line. The only difference is the length of the barrel, the handguard, and maybe whatever stock is on it. But the, the guts are universal, so there's nothing unique about that. So, you know, and like I said, none of this stuff is difficult. Uh, I made it look harder than it is. But none of this stuff is, is beyond your capability to take apart and put back together. It just takes a little bit of patience. The trigger pack will take you a little bit of fiddling, um, but you'll learn to just set it down and walk away and come back to it later um after sending the spring across the room for the third time or something but um it's just basic hand tools and a little bit of patience and a hammer